Hi, I'm Johnny from the Turtle Emporium. Today I'm going to do you a video showing you how to make the box turtle food balls or dinner balls that I give to my box turtles. So, start off with the ingredients. Main ingredients are lean minced beef. Always make sure you get the leanest stuff, the 5% or lower mint because you don't want too much fat in your diet, it's bad for the turtles. A hard boiled egg. So, Commercial, commercially available turtle food, so pellets with mealworms, shrimps and turtle pellets in there. Uh, calcium powder, multivitamins, a carrot for vitamin A and some seasonal veg. Now at the moment, these pumpkins are in the supermarket, these are fantastic. In the wild, box turtles would eat pumpkins quite happily. Uh, it's readily available in their environment, so it's great to include it as part of a natural part of their diet. So, first thing we want to do is prepare some of the vegetables. I'm going to grate the carrot. I'm going to be careful not to catch your knuckles or your fingers on the cutting blade of the carrot grater. Okay, so quite a lot of carrot there. Probably only going to use about half of this. The rest is really great to feed some of my um, herbivorous turtles like the Cooters, painted turtles, that sort of thing. We put it all half of that into the bowl. Other half we'll save for later. Pumpkin, this might be a challenge. We don't, want to, we don't want the seeds, that not, doesn't form part of the um, ingredient, so scoop the seeds out. And we don't want the skin either, so we're going to try and get as much of that skin off as possible. Watch your fingers when you're using a sharp knife. Um, or ask an adult to help you to do these things. Anything that involves a knife, make sure you're either competent or you ask an adult to help you do it. What we do now is we can grate the pumpkin the same as we grated the carrot. I would say that's probably plenty of pumpkin, what we want to do today. Put that in there too. So the hard boiled egg I've already cooked. Uh, make sure it is hard boiled, so boil it for at least 10 minutes. Let it cool down, what I do is I plunge it into some cold water immediately after boiling it which uh, helps it to stop cooking and cool down rapidly. And then we're going to chop it, and we're literally going to chop it with the shell on, uh, because the turtles, they will eat the shell as well. Again, an excellent form of calcium, this is. All turtles, or all aquatic turtles, or semi-aquatic turtles, will eat egg quite happily and they absolutely love eating the eggshells. Quite often while I'm cooking, if I'm cooking with eggs, I will chuck the, um, the eggshells in with the, egg, some of the other turtles, diamondbacks, mac turtles, anything that's particularly egg laying at the time as well, and need that extra calcium, and they'll literally just eat eggshells. So, really good for the turtles. Couple that up. As you can see, makes a right mess making this stuff. And it's pretty gross, which you'll see in a minute when we get the meat on the go, because there is no neat way of doing it. Right, you want to chop that up as finely as you can, because that, what that'll do is it'll mean it'll spread evenly throughout the mix, because there's only one egg, there's quite a lot of the other ingredients. So, in that goes onto the bowl. So 
So you see, I'm not, I'm not really weighing anything. I'm not really sort of measuring it out. For me, I, I don't tend to do that. I tend to just sort of guesstimate quite a lot of the things. And you can tell, you want it to be mainly um, the minced beef. Um, so the other, the other items all together, about half minced beef, perhaps two thirds, and everything else together needs to add up to uh, the rest. So just sort of judge it. It's, an, it's not a science, um, it's an art form. Right then, so let's put the mints in. So I'm using 500 grams here of lean mints. So that's about two small packs. I couldn't find one big pack in the supermarket today. So it's uncooked, goes in raw. That's quite often a question I get asked, do I cook the mint? No, it goes in raw. The egg is cooked, the mint is not. Right, so what else do we need to put in? Calcium powder. Obvious reasons, turtles and tortoises, their body is made up of a massive amount of bone. All that shell, all the carapace, all the plaster is all bone. So we need lots of calcium, particularly for growing turtles and tortoises. So let's just get some of that in there. Nice amount of calcium. And because it's hard to get all the vitamins into, the, into them that they would have in their natural varied diet, and you're gonna get some of this uh, reptile vitamin mix in there as well. Again, it's a good generous sprinkle. I don't measure it out, I suppose it's about a tablespoon if you wanted to do it that way, but I, I don't, I'm a little bit gung-ho. Uh, and then the last ingredient is the commercial turtle food that I use to feed all the aquatic turtles. So in here is mealworms, shrimps, pellets. Get a good amount of that in. Uh, they are dry and they are quite hard, but what happens is, is when they get into the mix with everything else, there's that much water in the carrot and the pumpkin and the mint meat that it soaks into those pellets and um, causes them to soften. This is the gross part. There is no easy way to do this. I've tried using a mixer, a blender. I ended up with mint meat all over the kitchen. You've got to get your hands in. So here we go. You want to get your fingers under it's like making any sort of um, sponge mix that you, would, that you would make with a cake. So imagine you've got the flour and the butter in there. You want to get your fingers under and keep bringing the dry sort of products to the top. Because otherwise, if you just stir it around, then all, all the dry um, ingredients will just sit on the bottom and you'll just be mixing uh, raw meat at the top. And it is raw meat. Um, so, unfortunately, this is one of the more unpleasant tasks of keeping turtles. Someone once said to me, if you want to keep a tortoise, you've merely got to like tortoises. If you want to keep turtles, you've got to love them. And you do, um, because otherwise, wouldn't do things like this. So do a turnover on the squidge up. So there we have. That is the box turtle food mix. So the next stage is I'm going to roll it into little balls. Uh, I've got a tub to put it into over here. It's very important to remember that because you've got raw meat all over your hands. Just be careful what you're touching on surfaces in your kitchen or, or your clothes or anything like that. Make sure you wash your hands carefully afterwards because there is a risk of uh, salmonella. So, just take a small piece of the mix and we're going to literally just roll it between our palms into a small ball shape. Now, this is entirely up to you how big you want your, your dinner balls to be. Um, it depends on how many box turtles you feed in or the size or age of the box turtle that you've got. Um, we have quite a few here, so we've got a couple of adult ones, and they'll quite happily eat one of those each in a sitting. Um, the, the babies, I might take one of these out, cut it in half, and, and spread it amongst a few different vivariums. So what I do is I put them all into one of these um, repurposed ice cream tubs. It's always important to reuse uh, where you can and clean. Obviously it's better for the environment than just going out and buying tubs. 
try and uh, space them out, keep them all a similar size, you're going to need to squish them together because the um, carrot and the pumpkin that's in there won't stick with the meat well. They'll try and fall apart in your hand. So get them all in there and space them out a little bit so that they're not, you don't want to force them in because in a minute we're going to put all these in the freezer. This box turtle food, if you, if you had just one box turtle, this could easily last you half the year, make this amount of box turtle food, and it could easily last you six months. Um, me, it probably lasts me about a month, um, depending on how many box turtles I've got in at a particular moment in time. So we're gonna make a, make a batch and then freeze it. If you squish them all in together, when you come to get them out later, it's a real pain separating them. What I tend to do is give them a first freeze. So I'll probably freeze them until next time I need any. Um, and I'll find that they're all clumped together. So I have to get a hammer and smash them all up. Uh, and they just come apart then once I smash them with the hammer. And uh, you can put them back in. And once I've smashed apart and they're frozen, I find that they stay apart, so then that becomes handier in the future for sort of feeding and portioning them out. So I'll just keep going for now, making lots of box turtle balls. Um, I'll probably get to speed up this video if I can work out to use it on the editing tool. And uh, I'll tell you at the end how many I've got. So there you go, I've made 45 little box turtle dinner balls out of all of that mix. Um, 40 of which I've put in this tub here and I'll put in the freezer and save for another day. And five I've kept out uh, because I'm going to feed my box turtles tonight. So we'll see how they like them. Well, I guess that counts as a success for my dinner ball recipe for at least one of the box turtles. That's the